In the last video lecture, we talked about some simpler things you can do with the functions in the stringer package to work with character strings. In this lecture and then in some of the remaining ones for this chapter, we're going to talk about something called regular expressions. And these are these are really wonderful. They're very a very, very powerful way to work with character string data. Um, it's also kind of like a, an ongoing process. So you'll learn some stuff in the lectures today, but especially when we get to all the different patterns you can have for regular expressions, that's something that I would not expect you to learn all of those immediately. Instead, I'm gonna to try to make sure you know some resources for looking it up. But I do want you to understand this general idea of regular expressions and how to use some of the simpler ones because it does become something really, really powerful for you to use when you're working with your data. So we've already done a few things that kind of play with this idea of regular expressions. So let me give an example and then I'll come back and talk about exactly what I mean by that term regular expression. So we've already had the case where we have used the separate function where we had some information stored all in one column and we wanted to pull that apart into two separate columns. So let's take a look in the, the Titanic data so again, make sure you have tidyverse loaded, and that includes the stringer our, uh, package, which we'll be using for some of this. And then load the Titanic uh, library and the Titanic train data frame. So if we look at the beginning of, of that data frame, one of the columns is this name column. So this has the name of the passenger. And one thing that we might want to do here, you can see that we've got a last name and then we've got information related to the title and the first name of that person. And we might want to split this apart into two separate columns where we've got a column for last name and then we've got a column for all the rest. If we want to do that, we can do separate. We just need to tell our where to pick to make that split, what pattern exists in each of these character strings that it should look for to figure out what goes in the left column and what goes in the right column. So in this case, we can do Titanic train, and then we're gonna do separate. The column that we wanna separate is this name column. We wanna separate it into two columns. We'll do it into last name, and then we can call this other name for right now. And then the last thing that we do is we put in that separator, what we wanna to use to separate. So you can see that that's always a comma and then a space. So if we run that, and let me add on a head at the end so we can see just the beginning. Now you can see that we split that column into two. We've got the last name column that just has the stuff that was before the comma and the space. And then we've got this other name information that was everything on the right hand side. So this kind of idea of thinking of what the pattern is that you wanna find and then doing something based on that pattern, that's really the idea behind regular expressions. And you can do it with very simple things like literally always using the same pattern. There we were literally always using the pattern of a comma and a space. But you can also expand by doing these different kinds of little codes that, that tell the computer what types of patterns to have. And those can have flexibility. So you can be looking just for the numbers in a particular area, or you can be looking for um, things that start with a capital M and then have a string of lowercase letters after them or other things like that. Like there's a lot of power for how you can define the exact pattern that you wanna match. But again, this regular expression idea is just that you have some expression that you can you can kind of like say what the rules are for it, even if it's as simple as just find a comma. And then those exist regularly throughout the string. So you're trying to find those cases everywhere and then maybe do, a, do something with those, like either extract them or just see which observations have a match in terms of that pattern. So in this slide, we're going to talk just kind of about the principles of this and go through some cartoons that kind of define it. And then in some of the later lectures, we will show a little bit more deeply how to implement that in R. So here's the idea. You might have a vector where you have these names, and we were just looking at, at that in terms of the, the comma and the space. 
But you might notice that there's some other things that might be interesting patterns here that are getting into those more complex steps of kind of like not always seeing literally the same thing, but instead matching a pattern that you can express that that's got some malleability in it. So for example, we've got these different title names here. So we've got Mr. and Mrs. and Miss. There are other ones that show up in the data too, but these are certainly some of the more common ones. So what we might want to do is find the pattern where we have something that starts with the comma and a space and then a capital M and then some letters, some combination of lowercase letters, and then ending with a period. So this might be our pattern. And you can see there's some literal elements in there, some elements that will never change, things like the comma and the space and the capital M and then the period at the very end. But now we've also included this pattern that's got a region in it that could take several different values. So this pattern would be matched in all three of these cases. It, it will be matched by Mr. in the first case, where that kind of like um, slot that can change that gets filled with a lowercase r. It's also matched for Mrs. in that case. That, that space with the flexibility is filled with an R and an S, and then it's also matched with Miss, where it's the ISS that's going in that more flexible spot. Now, once we've expressed a pattern like that, our, kind of our first task is to figure out what the pattern is, kind of like we just did, and then you need to express it using these regular expression patterns. They look a little bit like code, they can look kind of crazy, but they're not, they're not, it's not terribly hard to learn um, enough to be really useful with this. You could spend probably a whole year trying to learn all the different ways that you could work with this, but you can certainly get stuff that's useful pretty quickly. There are a few basic rules to kind of follow that we'll talk through. But once you've expressed things in that pattern, then we can use functions from the stringer package like string extract and string detect to either identify where there are matches or to pull out things that are, that are the matches in each of those. So let's walk through this example. And here I'm gonna use the example of, say we have a vector named EX that is just those names. So we can actually take a look at that. Let's define EX and we will define it as the Titanic train data. And then we will pull out just that original column, which I think is name. Yes. So let's take a look at that. All right, so you can see we have a vector now where we have all of these different names. Now, we might want to try to do those matches and both to extract and then also to be able to just test true and false if something is a match or not. And you can see already down here, there will be a few cases where it's not a match, something like right here where it's actually a reverend, R-E-V. So there's not gonna be a match there because that's starting with a capital R rather than a capital M. So we can do those functions in the same kind of way, but we need to know the pattern to put in. It's going to look again a little bit crazy. Some of those elements that are, are static or constant, uh, those will go in directly. So like our comma and space and the capital M. Those are some of the, those regular patterns that don't change. So they're going in directly. However, there are just a few things that are special characters. They mean something special in regular expressions. One is a period. And we'll talk about what that means in a special way in a later slide. But for right now, if you know it's special, all you need to know is that for R, we have to do what's called protect it by putting two backslashes before we get to it. So if we want R to look for a literal period, we need to do two backslashes first so it knows it's looking for a literal period there rather than looking for um, what that means in a special sense. So the other piece is we need to express this flexible part. So for that we can take any lowercase letter and it can be one or more. It turns out you can express that with this pattern at square brackets and lowercase a hyphen z and then a plus and we'll talk more in some later slides about how to figure out these patterns but for right now I just want you to know that this is the pattern 
that will look for a comma, a space, capital M, some number, one or more of, of lowercase letters, and then a period. So once we know that, we can use that with two functions, either string extract or string detect. Let's start with string extract. So we'll do string extract and we'll apply it to EX. And then we need to put in the pattern. So the pattern is that crazy thing we were just looking at, the comma, the space, capital M, any combination of lowercase letters, one or more, and then a period where we're, again, protecting that since that's a special character. So you can see that when we pull that out, it has pulled out any cases where there is a match and it's, it's taken out that pattern that we were looking for. So we've got the things like Mr. and Mrs. and so on. Now we can use the same pattern for some other functions. So we can do string detect with EX and we'll copy the same pattern down. And now what it's gonna do, instead of just pulling out the part that's a match on, the, on each of those, it's actually going to do a true false for whether or not they match. So you can see we've got those trues and falses. Now this, it turns out, can be really helpful because we can actually use this string detect inside um, a filter function. If we wanted to filter just to the places, just to the rows that have that match on name, we could do that. So let's take a look at that. We could take, we'll go back now to the original Titanic train. And in this case, we want to filter where, string de where it is true that we've got string detect. Oh, and we need to put, that was called name, I believe. And then let's put in the pattern again. So what this has done is it's limited our data set to just the names where there's a match for that. And then if we wanted to, if we wanted to pull out the inverse, just the ones that aren't a match, we can just put the bang operator at the beginning of that, and that will reverse this operation. And now you can see we've got a much shorter list, but it's all of these other things like reverend and doctor and, and so on, the ones that aren't a match with the M and then the full name and then the, the period. So again, just as a reminder, string extract and string detect are two different functions from stringer, and both of them are doing this job of checking for a pattern, but then the difference is what they output. String extract is outputting the match in terms of the pattern, and string detect is outputting a true or a false based on whether that particular observation or that particular value in the vector had that pattern. So here's an example of, again of how that would work. In this case, we're doing a simple, simpler pattern just of Mr. So if we had Mr., Mrs., Miss, and Doctor, it would see that MR can be matched both in Mr. and in Mrs. So it would pull out just that part for string extract and for string detect to give true. But for Miss and Doctor, that pattern isn't in there. There's not a capital M and then an R anywhere in there. And so for string extract in those cases, it will give you a missing value if it can't find a match. And then in string detect, it will set the result as false.